I want you to turn to Psalm 103 and Proverbs 30. So put a marker at Psalm 103, pretty close to Proverbs there. So if you want to, you can just flip over to Proverbs 30 or put a marker there. Let's open to Psalm 103. And uh, we're in a series called Divine Benefits. We'll finish the series today. Uh, I will be speaking next weekend, and then we'll begin the series Miraculous the weekend after that. Uh, This Tuesday night, by the way, I'm speaking at 7, which is uh, here at, uh, it's at this campus or at university campus? Where's, here? Where's my son-in-law? Ethan, he should know. He's over it. So anyway, all right, here, it's here. All right. So if they show up here and you're, we're not here, then it's your fault, okay? All right, so, uh, so I'll be speaking at seven. That is if you're a, an adult out of high school, 18 to 30, and um, uh, married or unmarried, then uh, this Tuesday night I'll be speaking there. Um, so we've been in a series called Divine Benefits, and this is the last one. There are five benefits. We've covered forgiveness, health, um, redemption, crowning or reigning in this life, and this week the title is Divine Satisfaction. Divine Satisfaction. What does it mean when God satisfies you? So look at Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. David's reminding his soul to not forget God's benefits. And then he lists five of them. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And here's this week's. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. All right, so I have four questions for you about divine satisfaction. Here's question number one. What is satisfaction? I mean, what, what is satisfaction? Now, we could take an English definition, but since the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, let's look at the, the Hebrew word that God uses here to talk about who satisfies. And, and this is a word that, that means to be made full, to, to be over, so full it's on the verge of overflowing. So full, God wants to satisfy you with good things that you're on the verge of overflowing. And actually, when you look at it, it it's so full that you're on the verge of being weary of the good things. You're almost getting tired of of the good things. That's how much it is. Probably the best illustration would be the way some of you act when you go to an all-you-can-eat buffet. You leave satisfied, but a little on the verge or over the verge of being satisfied. You see what I'm saying? So it says, who satisfies, that's God, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Now, that, that's a little shocking when you think about it, because he doesn't say who satisfies your heart even though out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So we know it probably relates to our heart as well, because what's in your heart comes out of your mouth. But it doesn't say who satisfies your soul. It says who satisfies your mouth. And this Hebrew word is a a very unique Hebrew word that's not in the Old Testament very many times, and it's only in the Old Testament 13 times. The whole Old Testament, 39 books, it's only there 13 times. And only two times is it translated mouth. 11 out of 13 times, I'm going to tell you how it's translated in the Old Testament when this word is used, and it, when I tell you, you're not going to understand it. You won't understand it at all until we explain it a little bit. Here's how it's translated the other 11 times. Ornaments. Now, didn't that help you? It blessed you, didn't it? <laughs> Ornaments. Ornaments. Okay. You say, well, I don't understand that. Okay. Well, here's the reason. Because what the word actually means in Hebrew are, is horse mouth ornaments. A, horse, a horse's mouth ornaments. In other words, our English word would be bridle. That's what this actually means, a bridle. And you think about it, a bridle has a bit, and when you put a bridle, think about some of the, when you talk about the ornaments, some of the bridles that you see on, on maybe a, a show horse, all the ornaments, that's what it's referring to. But still a bridle has a bit, and with that bridle, the Bible says, 
You, if you can control the mouth of the horse, you can control the body. It's the exact same thing that James chapter 3 says about the tongue. The person who can bridle his tongue can control his whole body. So it's, this is what this is referring to. And listen, a controlled mouth or a mouth under control. Here's what it's saying, and you may not like it, but it's, here's what it's saying. God satisfies the person who can control his mouth with good things. And you, when you think about your mouth, think about the two things, your words and your appetites. Not just your, your food appetites, but just appetites in general, your appetite for uh, a, a, a material thing, an appetite. If you can't control, listen carefully, if you can't control your appetites, you'll never be satisfied. You'll never experience this benefit. That's why, to me, it's so amazing that God takes, puts the Old Testament in Hebrew, the New Testament in Greek, because these languages are so descriptive. And it's always amazing to me the word that God chooses to put there. And here's what he says. Yes, I'm going I'm to uh, satisfy your mouth with good things. Uh, but let me tell you what kind of mouth I'll satisfy. A mouth that learns to be under control. That's the kind of mouth. So he satisfies our controlled mouths with good things, good things. And obviously, we could go into all sorts of uh, analogies about good things, what's a good thing. Well, let me just give you one. Years ago, I had a friend of mine who was in his 30s and had never been married. And he was praying and believing God for a wife, believing God for a wife. So he comes to me one day, he says, look at these scriptures I found. I got to show you these two scriptures. God gave me these, these two scriptures. Here are the scriptures. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, no good thing will be withheld from those who walk uprightly. Proverbs 18, 22, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. I said, what, what do you say? He said, see, don't you see it? A wife's a good thing, and if I walk right, God won't withhold good things from me. So I'm believing for a good thing, a wife. And uh, he said, is that okay for me to pray that way? I said, yes, you, you pray, because obviously it's God's will to bless us with uh, a godly spouse. And so he prayed. And about a year later, I was at a conference, and I see this man from across the room dragging this woman behind him, and he gets up to me, and it's this guy, and he says, Pastor Robert, I want you to meet my good thing. <laughs> so God satisfies us with good things. All right, so number two, that brings us to number two, who satisfies? Well, we could go back and look at all these benefits, who forgives? Who's the, who's the only one that can forgive you? That's God. Who heals? Who's the only one that can heal you? God. Even if we have a medical procedure, we thank God for that. But the science and the ability came from God. And even the ability of the human body to heal itself came from God. So God heals. God redeems. You can't redeem yourself. God crowns. And God satisfies. God's the only one that can satisfy us. You will never be satisfied by anyone or anything other than God. Never. Uh, let me show you some scripture. Proverbs 14, 14. The backslider in heart, the backslider in heart, maybe not even outwardly, just in your heart, will be filled with his own ways. But a good man will be satisfied from above. From above, from God. He'll be satisfied. Ecclesiastes 5, 10. He who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver nor he who loves abundance with increase. Psalm 145, verse 16, you, this is referring to the Lord, two verses before it tells you the Lord, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You open your hand, the Lord, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Please hear me. Nothing, nothing, and no one can satisfy you except the Lord. He's the only one. If you're looking for a new job or promotion or a new house or raise or a new husband or a new car, a new situation, new recognition, whatever you're looking for that's temporal, it can't satisfy Nothing temporary can satisfy, only the eternal can satisfy, and that's the Lord. You can be in bad circumstances, 
and still be satisfied. You can be in a job and not be satisfied with where you are in the job and still be satisfied. <laughs> because you have an ongoing, vital, passionate, head over heels relationship with Jesus Christ. You can be sitting in an office that you don't want to be in and sitting there satisfied because of your relationship with Jesus. Um, get rich quick. And by the way, it's quickly. <clears throat> but anyway, <laughs> just for those of you who use that thing, at least say it grammatically correct. Uh, but get rich quick <laughs> businesses perpetuate dissatisfaction. Because at the core, they catch you by saying, now when you make money, you'll be satisfied. And you won't. You won't be satisfied. It's not money that, that satisfies you. Um, I had a friend of mine that had a goal to be at a certain place when he was 40 years old financially. And uh, he was in the oil business, oil and gas business, and he became very successful. And when he was 40 years old, he reached that goal. He could have retired at 40 and never worked another day in his life. He reached that goal. Here's what he told me. The next year of my life was the worst year of my life. He said, I was miserable. I was depressed. I was discouraged. I went to doctors. I went to psychiatrists. He was a believer. And he said, at the end of that year, he said, I cried out to the Lord, finally. And I said, Lord, what is it? And the Lord said to him, very simply, money doesn't satisfy. I'm the only one that satisfies you. Here's what he said to me. He said, you know what I learned? If your goal is to climb to the top, there's only one thing left to do when you reach your goal, and that's jump off. There's nowhere else to climb. Do you know you can never get to the top of God? <laughs> He's the only one that can satisfy. So who satisfied? God does. Here's the third. What is the result of satisfaction? Because it says on all these benefits, who forgives, who heals, who redeems, who crowns. And on this one, it gives us a result. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. So before we talk about that, let me show you now Proverbs chapter 30. If you have a, a marker there, if you just want to flip. It's easy to get to Proverbs 30 pretty quickly from Psalm 103. Proverbs 30. Uh, look at verse… Now, I think personally this, this could apply to many generations. It's talking about a generation. I think it's applying to the generation we're living in. Proverbs 30 verse 11 says, there is a generation that curses its father and does not bless its mother. You know, we talked about honoring. Today's the day to honor our fathers and mothers. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a command with a blessing. Okay. There's a generation that doesn't honor their parents. Verse 12, there's a generation that is pure in its own eyes. Think about how this generation, more than any other generation now, is calling the impure pure. Pure in their own eyes, yet is not washed from its filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. Think of the pride that's in our world today. There is a generation whose teeth are like swords and whose fangs are like knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Think about the sarcasm of this generation, how sharp words are today. But you have to understand that it's going on because many people separate these next two scriptures. But this is now giving you an analogy of what, what, this gen what causes this in this generation. Verse 15, the leech has two daughters, give and give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Four never say enough. The grave, the barren womb, the earth that is not satisfied with water, and fire never says enough. So he gives us four analogies of things, natural things that aren't satisfied. But what he's doing is, look at the context, he's talking about a generation that's prideful, that's disobedient to parents, that calls the impure pure, that has sharp words, sarcasm all the time out of their mouth. And why? Here's why. Because they're never satisfied. That's why. Because their attitude is give to me, give to me. 
Here's the word that we would use today, and I know this is a controversial word, but this is the word that would describe this, an entitlement generation. You work hard, but I'm entitled to what you made. That's entitlement. It's a leech trying to get your life from someone or something on this earth rather than get your life from God. And here's what he's saying. He's saying that this generation is going to act like this, but the reason they act like that is because they're never satisfied. The reason they're never satisfied is because the only one that can satisfy is the Lord. Um, This says that your life… Now, here's here when we talk about not satisfied. Let me, let me before I go into that, um, are some of the physical maladies that we have today because we're not satisfied? Now, sometimes uh, there needs to be a two-income home. I understand that. But sometimes there are two-income homes because we're not satisfied. We're not satisfied with the house we have, the car we have, the income we have. Kids are busy. Um, Did the generation just a few years before us have chronic fatigue syndrome? Now, if, if you have that, I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm really not. But I'm simply wondering if some of the physical problems that we have have spiritual roots. Uh, You've probably seen the reruns, but you remember the Andy Griffith show? Every night Aunt B would make a great meal, great meal, you know, good, healthy, fried chicken, gravy, (laughs) things like that, great meal. And they'd eat that meal, and then what would would they do after that meal? You know what they do? What'd they do? Sit on the porch. (laughs) until it got dark, I guess, <laughs> and then go to bed. I'm just wondering if they had chronic fatigue syndrome, because <laughs> all they did was sit on the porch. <laughs> they th- I'm just saying, are some of our problems caused because we can never have enough? Are you tired most of the time? Are you irritable? By the way, feel free to nudge the person in the ribs beside you (laughs) at any time during this message. Is it because you're not satisfied? Is it because you just want something else? 